Hi, fourth graders, it's Mrs. Belatesh, and today we're gonna to talk a little bit about the aquarium that we looked at last week. So that is a water environment, right? And it consists of living and non-living environmental factors. An ecosystem is how those living and non-living environmental factors interact so that they are, how they are connected and how they affect one another. Today, we're gonna to start looking at these cards that you have. And on each card, there is a photograph and there are some, there's some information about that animal. So there's the natural history, the food, and the predator. What I would like you to do is for you guys to get into groups of three or four, and each person take four or five cards. There's 20 cards all together and read about the organism that's on your card, learn about its history, learn about what it eats, and who its predators are. Okay, now that you guys have looked at these organisms, I want you to look at the predator and prey relationship. Talk to each other about the animals that you have, which ones eat each other, which ones are the predators, and which ones are the prey? I'm gonna give you one quick little example. I have a bird called a grouse, and its predator is a coyote. And here's a coyote. So this is a predator-prey relationship, right? Here's the grouse, and it is the prey, and here's the coyote, and this is the predator. So I'd like you to make sure that you have, everybody can get an example of a prey and a predator relationship. And here's some grandma grass. Not like grandma, but grandma grass. And it makes its own food through photosynthesis. And its predator are grazing mammals such as deer, elk, antelope, birds, rabbits, hares, chipmunks, reptiles, insects, and tortoises. So now I don't have only a predator and prey relationship. I have a little bit of a food chain. The food chain starts with the grass and then the grouse eats the grass and then the grouse is eaten by the coyote. I want to show you something about these arrows, right? So this is a food chain. The grandma grass grows and it makes seeds. The grouse eats the seeds. So the energy from the grandma grass is eaten and goes into the grouse. And then the grouse gets eaten by the coyote. So the energy from the grouse goes into the coyote. When you make a food chain, the thing that is being eaten goes, the arrow goes towards the thing that is doing the eating. Take a look at your cards. Are there any cards, any organisms that don't eat something else? Well, it should be things like the blueberry the grama grass, pine trees, algae. If you look at them, it says they make their own food through photosynthesis. So they don't eat anything else. They make their own food or they produce their own food. Organisms that make their own food are called producers, and those organisms are plants. Let's get your science notebook out and turn to the next blank page, and let's write food chains at the top. Please write producers. Producers are plants that make or produce their own food through photosynthesis. So all of the producers are plants. Plants can make their own food. 
How do animals get food? Animals eat other organisms. We are consumers. We are consuming or eating something else. Some animals only eat plants. Look through your cards. Which one of these organisms only eat plants? When I was looking through the cards, I noticed that the snowshoe hare, the chipmunk, and the grouse were the animals that only ate plants. Now in your notebook, please write consumers. Consumers are animals that eat other organisms. Some of those consumers are herbivores, and a herbivore is an animal that consumes only plants. Now, let's look at animals that eat only other animals. I found the red-tailed hawk, the great blue heron, and the brook trout. They eat only other animals. Let's write this in your notebook. A carnivore is an animal that consumes only other animals. Now, I have some other animals that are left over. And these animals eat both plants and animals. I have a robin, a coyote, and a black bear. They are omnivores. Let's put that in your science notebook. An omnivore is an animal that consumes both plants and animals. Now, I have a bunch of other cards that don't fall into those categories. Those organisms are called decomposers. They break down matter and energy. They break down dead plants and animals and return them back into the system. Not every animal is eaten by another animal. Not every plant is eaten by an animal. Some of them die and then their matter and energy is recycled into the system. So let's take a look at those. They are called decomposers. Decomposers are organisms that recycle organisms and return their nutrients to the system. It could be an earth system, like soil, or it could be like a water system, like the ocean. Now, I would like you guys to turn the page and I want you to write my food chain. And then you're gonna put producer, skip a line, herbivore consumer, skip a line, carnivore slash omnivore consumer, it can be either one, and then a decomposer. Look through the cards and make sure that you find a food chain like this. And then you need to make sure that you have the arrows in the right direction. So I'm gonna go back to my grandma grass as the start of my food chain. So I have the grandma grass is eaten by the grouse, which is eaten by the coyote, which then when it dies, it is decomposed by the bacteria. Now, you can also put it in the other direction. You can put producer at the bottom, herbivore, carnivore, decomposer, and you can have the arrows going up. The key thing is that the arrow goes from the thing being eaten into the thing that's doing the eating. Great job today, guys. Next week, we're going to make it a little more complicated. Instead of having a food chain, we're gonna start thinking about a food web. See you next time.